This is the Like a T. I'm gonna do a first impressions review in a kind of unconventional way because I only bought this camera to use it with manual focus lenses. I had no intention of buying the autofocus lenses. The cheapest autofocus lens for this camera cost twice as much as the body itself. The main reason I got this camera was um, because I want to see how Leica does with their CMOS sensors. I have the Leica M8 that I've done another video on and one day I will want to upgrade that camera. I might want to get the M9 which has a CCD sensor like the M8 or I might want to go with the M Type 240 I guess um, which is almost a similar price as the M9 has a CMOS sensor. Basically I think the image quality from the M8 is amazing but I'm curious how Leica handles the CMOS sensors. So I bought the Leica T because this is a pretty cheap intro to Leica's CMOS sensors and I can test it with the same lenses that I have to use on the M8 so I can compare the image quality uh, without breaking the bank and buying an M240 because I'm not sure that I want to buy one of those yet. Um, so I got this camera, it was around $500 or something, around there, $550 maybe. And it came with an adapter. It's not the it's not the adapter that was made for the camera, but looking online, those cost about half as much as I paid for the camera. So I'm going to use this third-party adapter, Photo Photosy. Photosy. Uh, I don't know what difference it would really make. Um, I only have one lens that has six-bit coding anyway. I guess I'll start start with the parts that I really like about this camera. Um, Obviously, if you're watching this video, you probably know that the body of the camera is is its biggest selling point. They have the ads where they show it being hacked out of a, or filed down from a solid block of aluminum. It's thin, it feels really solid, it feels really quality. I mean, without a lens, it's really light, actually. And it's just a really nice feeling camera. It feels like a... It feels like how I wish the Leica M8 would feel, actually. If all of the Leica M cameras felt like this, but had the rangefinder built in, I would be pretty satisfied with that. Unfortunately, they don't. Uh, another good thing about this camera is the screen. Can't see it that well, but it is large. It's a touch screen. The menu is like kind of okay. People like the menu, I think it's okay. You can rearrange the icons however you want and that type of thing. The screen is pretty good. Um, I do notice sometimes because when you hold it, your thumb will like sometimes tap it and stuff unavoidably and that's kind of annoying. For the most part, it doesn't really matter but if you're in a certain mode, sometimes it will like, um, it will pull up some menus saying like, do you want to do whatever you're trying to do? Yes, no. That can be kind of annoying. These little dials are kind of nice. You can reassign some of them uh, to be whatever different functions you want. ISO, white balance, focusing aid, which is just the zoom in aid. And I mean, the image quality on this camera is actually really nice uh, when you get it in focus. It does not have focus peaking. So you focus basically by eye with this little screen or kind of big screen or you use the zoom in 3x or 6x zoom to focus that gets kind of grainy and low light uh, and shaky but it's okay it's not that hard to focus I would say I get about 70% of my images in focus that I want to the raw files from this camera look really really nice the colors are really nice the JPEGs kind of suck and I mean they're not terrible but they're I don't know, they're not amazing. And I think their colors on the JPEG are actually pretty weak. I think that there's a vivid mode and those colors are like oversaturated looking and kind of gross. And then there's like a normal mode which is kind of undersaturated. And for some reason the DNG is like perfect in the middle of the raw file. So I like to start with the raw files. The weird thing is when you're selecting the file format, there's no option to only shoot raw, which is kind of weird. You have to shoot JPEGs. It's kind of annoying because I usually end up just having to delete the JPEGs and stick with the RAWs. 
Um, the raw files are about 24 megabytes each, so a little more than twice the size actually of the M8, which had 10.6 megabyte files for the RAWs. This camera also shoots video. The video is okay. It doesn't really give you many options and everything is like auto exposure, auto, I don't know, whatever levels and stuff. Pretty much everything is automatic. There's also a built-in flash, which is like cute. Not super strong, but it's about as strong as maybe a built-in DSLR flash for like the small DSLRs that have those. Um, it is a bit flimsy, a little flimsy piece of plastic that pops up out of the nice, everything else around it feels really quality. And then this like flimsy little plastic thing pops out. It's kind of kind of dumb. I'm probably gonna break it off if I keep this camera by accident. Um, despite all these like nice positive things, I'm not sure that I'm gonna keep this camera. I'm not sure that it is really good for what I want. I like the CMOS sensor in the Leicas. I think Leica does a good job of creating a nice color profile, which is something I like. Um, just reduces the work I have to do in post. But unfortunately, the software, despite having a very, <laughs> From what I've read, the software update in 2014 was was a huge overhaul that doubled the speed of the camera, and um, I guess the startup time was pretty pretty slow before. And now um, a lot of stuff is kind of snappy. Like the touch is pretty responsive. The startup time is like under a second, I think. It starts up right away, which is nice. The thing that really bugs me though is the uh, there's a feature that's like um, what is it called? Auto review. <laughs> Auto review. This is like a setting that determines how long it will show the photo that you just took before it goes away and you get back into live view mode. Uh, you can set the duration and you can set it to permanent, five second, three second, one second or off. I have it set to off and for some reason when you're shooting with manual focus lenses uh, it just comes up anyway and it stays on for a really long time. It stays on sometimes up to almost five seconds or 10 seconds, uh, maybe five seconds. But it's like, you can't see, like if you wanna take two photos in a row, bloom, bloom, you can do it. I'll show you. You can do it, but you can't actually see what you're taking because the photo stays on the screen for so long. It's, and it's like really annoying. And half pressing the button, error shutter. What the, oh, okay. I haven't even seen that before. I'll try to turn the camera off and turn it back on. Yeah, it's okay now. But I mean, something, yeah, it's supposed to be, I think like, if you put it on continuous mode, it, it can shoot kind of fast. But for some reason, like the live view doesn't come back and the camera itself just gets like stuck this is with auto review turned off and it's still reviewing, it's still reviewing, it's still reviewing. Okay, now it's gone. So that's like really irritating to me. Um, and I looked a lot online and some forums and stuff and basically the general consensus is that is due to using manual focus lenses. And I've heard actually that it will do the same thing using manual focus functionality on the autofocus lenses. Something about the autofocus system that kicks it back into a live view it's kind of dumb. And another thing that is actually interesting is that if you pop up the flash and shoot manual focus using the flash, it doesn't, it doesn't um, auto review. It goes right back into live view. Even now when the flash didn't fire because it was in auto mode and didn't need it, just having the flash up makes it go straight back into live view. So it's like definitely a bug in the software. Um, and this camera being three and a half years old. I kind of doubt that they're gonna be putting more, much more effort into it because now they have the TL2. <laughs> I think that's kind of a deal breaker for me actually because you know, like if you're focusing and you take a photo, like a portrait and uh, the subject blinks and you're like, crap, I just wanna take this one more time and you, <laughs> you have to wait to like make sure that the focus is in focus. You have to wait like up to five seconds 
to make the the auto review go away. So just an example, taking a photo, you can see I have auto review duration set to off. So now I'm going to just take a sample photo. All right? So now it's like stuck reviewing even though it says no auto review. It hangs on for like a few seconds, no matter what you do. The only thing that you can do to make it stop, pop out the flash, goes right back. So with the flash on, no auto review. With the flash off, mandatory auto review. This is like so irritating. Um, and that alone, I think, is almost enough to make me want to sell the camera. The other thing is I didn't think I would mind just shooting with the screen and no viewfinder. Um, but you know, the Leica M8 and, and even the Sony a7 II has like kind of spoiled me. I could, could buy the viewfinder for this, but I don't know. I don't know if I like the camera enough <laughs> to uh, spend more money on some accessory for it, unfortunately. Um, it takes sharp photos. It's just, I don't know. <laughs> if you don't like shooting with it, then it's maybe not worth keeping. Um, shooting with the, the screen, it's okay, but I guess this just feels less natural to me than that. <laughs> Another thing that's kind of annoying with the Leica T is that it includes a, a Wi-Fi function with an app, and the app is supposed to work as a remote as well as a live view. Um, but for some reason, it seems to only work as a remote. So I'll tap here to connect the camera. And it's just blank for some reason. And now on the camera it says connected and the screen here is just blank as well. It doesn't matter if I half press or anything. So here you can, see, I don't know if you can really see, yeah, you can see the settings here are changing. So it is actually like, Picking up the settings from the camera, you can also set a few various settings here and you can choose your mode. But here should be live view and it's just not working, it's just black. And you can't even see on the on the screen of the actual camera, you can't see either what you're taking a photo of. So you can use this to take a, like as a remote to take a photo and it takes the photo and it'll display it here. But now it just stays, this is the only thing on the screen. It's kind of defeats the purpose of having the app for me when using the app actually makes it so that you can't see the screen on the screen or like you can't see any preview of what you're taking a photo of either on the camera or on the app. I'm not sure if that's due to the manual focus lenses being attached or not, but it's just one more irritating thing about this camera. I'm not sure. I'm really not sure about this camera. I don't know if I'm going to keep it or not. Because part of what I like about Leica is the really great experience of using the M cameras. And for this camera, I, it's really not there. It's a beautiful camera, but the experience of using it sucks.